<laughs> Are we back, dude? <laughs> <laughs> He's back? Guys, we've got a fun React video for you. There's a guy on YouTube, uh, November Hotel, 84,000 subs, doing pretty well. He's got a couple really good uh, video essay type videos on gaming as a whole. Kind of the stuff that I eventually might want to make myself. I don't know. I haven't caught up with his most recent stuff, but this was a video I watched a long time ago. I thought it made some really good points, and I was like, you know what? I should just react. Nice 12 minute video. Why good graphics don't matter? Off rip, I agree, but I want to let him make his case and I'll obviously pause and chime in and react as they do. Here we go. <laughs> There's always been an obsession with video game graphics ever since their inception. And as years have passed, graphical technology has improved as hardware has improved, naturally. Very and true. seeing the leaps in graphics since the early 2000s has been nothing but amazing to witness during my time as a gamer. But over the last decade, yeah. graphical improvements began to mean much less. Comparing games from 2023 to 2013, I often find that not just a few, but a lot of those games from before 2013 still look better than the ones releasing in current year. Now certainly there are some- Uh, I mean, in general, no, but I, I, I know where he's going with this argument, because it's more about the style than the actual fidelity, and just because you got 4K textures or 2K textures instead of HD or, you know, 480p or something doesn't actually make the game better. And I know that that's the point he's gonna make. It's never gonna be a, a perfect line straight forever. Like, you can't always continue to improve and be more lifelike. We were already pretty damn lifelike. But yeah, this is actually an example a lot of people mentioned. And I, I don't know, I've never actually thought about it, but a lot of people prefer the look of Dying Light 1. I see the games as almost identical looking, but maybe I'm not paying enough attention. Anyway. Some noticeable improvements if you really focus on the textures and analyze the pixels yeah. when comparing a modern game to one a decade old, but playing a game like Dishonored from 2012 or Bioshock Infinite from 2013, or even The Order 1886 from 2014, if you didn't know any better, you'd think these games were new releases. They just don't look as dated as you That's might fair. think for being 10 years old. Yeah, Yet, I don't know the anything about The Order, but this look looks really good with the lighting and everything. And going back here, yeah, like Battlefield has looked good forever, and it technically looks the best it's ever looked. Modern game technically, to right, but whatever. Old, but playing a game like Dishonored yeah, from Dishonored 2012, is so, or Bioshock Infinite from the style 2013, is so unique, I love or it. even the Order 1886 from 2014, yet despite the technology getting better since then, very few games can top these games, or even match them visually. <laughs> kind of funny. So why is this? Well, like this. well <laughs> Freaking, since then... I'm pretty sure Mirage is the newest. Right? Is it not? Dude, I don't even know the timeline of Assassin's Creed games. That's how irrelevant they are to me at this point. I mean, Assassin's Creed Shadows looks cool. The the upcoming, uh, you know, samurai looking one. But I, 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 man, when's the last one I actually played? Black Flag and I didn't even finish it. And then I eventually bought Odyssey because I thought it was cool because there's kind of like, you're kind of a Spartan. That's kind of cool, but man, the switch to open world just tanked the quality of the Assassin's Creed franchise. My goodness. Very few games can top these games, or even match them visually. So why is this? Well, like all things, a tool is only as good as the one who wields it. And when in the sure. right hands, modern game development tools can produce amazingly impressive yeah, results. Insane. I I am very biased against, like, cowboy. Southern America, I just... Something about it really rubs me the wrong way. I think it's probably just, like, political biases, but uh, I really should play the Red Dead series. It's, it looks incredible to experience a world like this where it's actually this built out the actual gameplay doesn't look fun but like walking around in this environment would be super chill <laughs> that's that's the extent of my excitement for a game like red dead i just don't care for it but unfortunately so many studios have been putting out games that while graphically are <laughs> impressive due to their technology that they're built with yeah, dead island, end up looking right? like utter dog a game like for spoken okay i mean that's kind of a weird opinion it doesn't look bad it just looks generic it looks like a Unreal Engine 5 asset flip. Dead Island, I I think I think they get a free pass due to being in development hell for like 12 years or whatever it was. Like crazy amount of time passed around between like 10 studios. I don't think it was 12 years, it was like seven, but uh, I'll give them a pass on that. But man, Dead Island 1, I've always thought like you got Dying Light and Dead Island at one point were both out of tech land. 
which is like the same publisher or the same studio. They were very similar and they were both first person zombie games. But Dying Light had the parkour and it was more horror based and the nighttime's crazy. And then D Dead Island was like, bleh, we're on an island, bleh, goofy. And then obviously Dead Rising is like third person extra goofy goober. A game like Forspoken has great graphics, but looks extremely generic and almost blinding in its visuals yeah. in a very washed out and ugly sort of way. Immortals of Avium, the game released mm. just a few days ago running on Unreal Engine 5, graphically outstanding, but yeah, looks like an Unreal both Engine of those asset games were a joke. project, even though I know it isn't. The devs probably did work Where's very my hard mouse, on creating dude? It's the right in the middle of my screen. Ah, <laughs> uh, Immortals of Avium, it like, it is like, what if we took the powers from Skyrim and like do hand magic, but in Unreal 5? Wow. EA people were like, yes, make that, do it. Left the boardroom, they threw 20 million at it or some ridiculous amount of money. I actually got to see this. <laughs> 125 million, like stupid amount of money stupid amount of money it's like it's like late crab champions like you're in the round you're in round 80 and you have split shot arc shot scatter shot triple shot you have just infinite projectiles and all the elements all at once like that's the amount of throw up puke that immortal savavian was and then forspoken obviously they just had goofy writing and was kind of kind of shallow did i just i didn't even, I didn't even try to play it didn't play immortal savavian either but anyway Immortals of Avium, the game released Avium. just a few days ago, no, it's running definitely on Avium, Unreal Engine dude. Come 5, on. Come on. is graphically outstanding, but looks like an Unreal Engine asset flip project. And it doesn't help that this game in particular is so visually bloated. Like, I love yep, fast-paced games, but I can't tell what the f*** is happening on screen here. <laughs> dude, he beat, is... I beat him to it, but I should have just let the video play. But yeah, it's like, um, it's kind of like people complaining about Borderlands 3 having too much stuff on screen. Like... It's just a lot. As a player, I'm sure you can track it because you know exactly what's happening. But as a watcher, like watching the trailers, watching the streamers who got paid to play it, like Shroud played it. He just sprinted through it in like three days, not even like eight hours of play. And, and he was straight up like, yeah, I don't recommend this. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's just awful due to the graphical and artistic style they went for. While I understand that realistic graphics sell to the casual audience, I'm always looking towards they, companies though? that have a more distinctive- I'm just trying to think, like, when I was a little kid, middle school, all you played was Call of Duty, Battlefield, and Halo, and maybe Gears of War. It was an argument of, like, which- does this Call of Duty's gonna have better graphics than last year? Like, oh, Black Ops 1 looks way better than Modern Warfare 2. No, it doesn't, blah, blah, blah. As a kid, I remember thinking that way, and there were other games that were cartoony or stylized, so, I guess, like, if you're really young, your mindset might still be like that. I mean, I'm just I'm just one guy. Let me know. Do you care about the graphics that much? But nowadays, like, I almost... It's not even something I consider too much. I mean, obviously, there's, there's a balance with that. Because eventually, I'm going to have this Fallout tier list going. And it, it, it was hard to play Fallout New Vegas with the graphics. I, I know. I'm a hater. I still think the game's great. But even with some mods, that game just looks bad. And like that's just a product of the Bethesda engine. I'm just gonna move on. Even if it is more low poly, some wrongfully ascribe this generic look of video games to the Unreal Engine itself. But mm. just because a no. game is made no. in Unreal doesn't mean they have to look like Not this. At all. I think Sea of Thieves is a great example of a game that takes advantage of the strengths or that Fortnite. the Unreal Engine provides. <laughs> like it doesn't it have to look good at all in many regards. Or it looks good, but just it still not has a photorealistic. Art style that separates it from a game like, say, Atomic Heart. It's not God, the engine, it's how it's being used. Firewatch, a game just made used in the, the same clip two times. Atomic Heart is another one that I need to play at some point, but like, do I? Cause it's so mediocre in every way, except the graphics. But it's like, is that enough to make it a fun experience? I just, I don't think so. The engine is another example of a game that's a visual treat, yet is not what I would consider AAA graphics. And to get to the main point here, I'm a strong believer that graphics don't really matter. To some degree, sure, but we've reached a point in the last 10 years, yeah, and especially in current year, where graphics Only have mostly plateaued. Extent. So art style is everything. Is a testament Booker, to how true catch. that statement is. Games yeah, like Bioshock Rage games from 2011 so cool. or Stalker from 2006 Wait, what was that? still hold up incredible. Games like Rage from 2011. Dude, it's actually crazy because Rage 1, the original Rage, had this cool look and it was almost a Bethesda game. God, I just found Bethesda graphics. Now I'm, I'm saying they're, they're unique. I don't know. Rage One was like truly a unique game, and then Rage Two was like Unreal Engine asset flip. Like went right back. I, I did kind of enjoy Rage Two, and I didn't really give it a full play, and then I uninstalled it to make space for something else. I do want to play it fully, but anyway, yeah, Rage One was sick. 
or Stalker from 2006 still hold up incredibly well. Stalker game coming and games like Fable what, this year, or 2025, Age something like that. Kingdoms of Amalur employ a timeless art style and visual style so they can be enjoyed for years to come. Two years ago with the release of Elden Ring, there was some very strange rage bait online about Elden Ring having bad graphics. <laughs> the graphics are dog. Are Shut you your sure ass about up, that? bro. <laughs> Shut your ass the up. Graphics are dog. No, they're not. <laughs> the graphics are dog. I don't know who that the is, but that dude's an idiot. Dog. But I'd take a hundred different games with an art style half as good as what FromSoft delivered nah, this before another Atomic dude, Heart Ring. or Immortals of Avium or Forspoken. And I do El want to reiterate something. I've Elden Ring is straight up one of those games that general opinion is actually right. Elden Ring is a fantastic game. That's it. You're not allowed to say it's not. There's no, there's no arguing. You can say it's not for you. You can say you don't like Souls-like games, but you cannot say that it in and of itself is a bad game. You, you can't. There's no, there's zero objectivity to that opinion. Graphics aren't that good. They're not photorealistic Unreal Engine 5, but what, like, what are we talking about? Oh my goodness. 100 different games with an art style half as good as what FromSoft yeah, delivered what the hell? before another Atomic Heart or Immortals of Avium or Forspoken. No, 100%, 100%. And I do want to reiterate something I've mentioned in my past videos, and that's that these two things aren't mutually exclusive. You don't have to pick just one. Throw an equal sign and a slash through that bitch, man. Not equal. A game can have both amazing graphics and an amazing art style, and even high visibility. Yep. The game director Hugo Martin said that during development for Eternal, they had at first made the lighting come from the environment much like they did with Doom 2016. But in playtesting it felt really oh. bad because oftentimes you couldn't clearly see what it was that got you killed. And with Eternal being a much more punishing game and more fast paced than 2016, visibility took precedent over realism. Okay, before he gets into the next point. Doom, fantastic series, highly recommend. If you haven't played it, what the hell are you doing with your life? Also, new Doom, like Dark Ages, whatever. Like a prequel, basically, coming in 2025? My goodness. I should almost just do one of these videos for the Xbox Showcase. I hate to stroke Xbox's ego because they've been so shitty this year with all the layoffs and just being a mega corporate piece of shit. But, wow, like an actually decent showcase. Not all the games are really Xbox exclusive, but we got a Gears of War prequel, the Doom prequel, and now that Bethesda and id Software are Xbox, it might actually be Xbox exclusive. I don't know. But yeah, I didn't realize that the Doom uh, Eternal took a different turn. I just saw the two games. I'm like, oh yeah, the graphics look a little bit better, a little bit better in uh, Eternal. But yeah, my goodness. It's such a smart decision too, because the game can be considered to have good graphics, but it's also stylized and it works and they still prioritize the player experience. And that's a huge thing here with a game like Mortals of Avium. If the game's not fun, or it's just there's so many aspects that make it not fun, like the game is not gonna do well, man. It's just not gonna do well. It doesn't matter how cool your idea is on paper, if it's not actually fun to do. God damn, go back to the drawing board. So many examples. Visibility really matters in games. It isn't just Immortals that has this problem. It's a problem I and many others have with many different modern mm. games. Yeah. Oh my now, goodness. Primarily... Yeah. Oh, I gotta do this more because it just like sparks little rants that like stuff I just want to spew into the universe. Just opinions on gaming. Apex is a game that I just, I want to love. I want to so bad because I like Titanfall and I like Titanfall 2 and it's the same universe theoretically. For some reason, Titanfall makes it easier. Like you can just see enemies in the Titanfall games. You can't see shit in Apex. You can't see anything. It's just shades of gray and white to gray to black. Like, I'm not that great at these shooters anyway, and I don't have a lot of people to play with. I mean, I'm sure I can find them, but my current friends don't play Apex. Uh, like, even if they did, I don't want to. <laughs> I, I'm not interested. It's, it's way too much. Why does it feel like everyone just blends into everything? Now, some might- Actually, oh man, I, I let it go for like 10 seconds and I have another thought. I've thought about that. I've thought about that with Call of Duty. Because- Call of Duty was like my jam. It just really was. And I know that that's like most gamers that are uh, around my age. OG Modern Warfare 2, OG Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, World at War maybe. But these games, you know, they had good graphics for the time, but there was less computing power for like optional vegetation and environmental clutter, like just uh, trash cans and stuff blowing in the wind and like extra details like cars and bikes and just clutter right it's clutter but it's not a bad word it's just it's just what it is it's environmental clutter you just you can see the opponents because any movement is the opponent there's not trees swaying in the wind like crazy realistic floppy bushes and flags and birds and stuff like if you see something moving it's an opponent and they stick out 
And now, everything's so hyper-realistic, you can't see anyone. I mean, there could be a guy rustling around in these bushes right here. Or, like, his crosshair's right here. There could be a dude, like, poking his head behind this little cement thing and you just barely see it there's an argument here again and sure, on 4K. games going for a more military sim style or something like that should lean into the fact that it's hard to see enemies and while i can understand that to a certain degree seeing nah, things nah, in it's real too life much. is much different than on a screen yeah i don't want to looking at a mountain range in real life versus a picture of that mountain range your eyes can pick out much more things in person whereas yep, in a picture true. you're gonna lose a lot of detail because you just have captured a 3d environment but on a 2d plane and when you play video games, it's on a screen, which is essentially a picture. You aren't going to be able to see the same okay. things on this mountainside in Battlefield 2042. Yeah, like that enemy. If you saw this Come mountain. On. This is probably pretty realistic lighting. Like the main light source is the sun all the way diagonally right somewhere, or really even behind him. So it's dark under the tree. The tree is not super well lit. And there's an opponent kind of scrounging Sorry, around. Battle. There he is, but you can't see it. You can't see it. So it's like, oh, wow, well, Battlefield, F that. I'm just not going to play it. I'm just going to go play something else. I'm going to go play a single player game. <laughs> field 2042 uh, compared to if you saw this mountain in person i think back to the 2008 to 2012 era of fps games that's what I'm saying. and the textures were a bit lower resolution but the character models were often highly detailed and it really made them stand out by having sharper objects on somewhat of a more blurry backdrop and funnily enough you'll yeah what i think this was world at war right here now this is mw2 it's a bit easier in those uh, maybe games, even mw1 especially at a distance or MW3. <laughs> it's one of the modern warfare's. Uh, but you see how obvious the player movement was. There's no crazy high texture uh, buildings and debris and clutter and just everything making it impossible. You'll often see competitive FPS players cranking their graphics yep. down Crank in games low. in order to have a bit more of a Minimal competitive settings. edge. And while I don't see. think every game should look like BattleBit, it's been a lot of fun <laughs> playing that game and having long-range engagements in my gameplay. A slight detour here and i don't want to rant too much dude indie games taking over this year even with you know finally we have some good triple a larger titles on the horizon at least in the the uh series of franchises that i really enjoy but man just a game like battle Bit, which i'm pretty sure is a dev team of like three dudes like college guys or like right out of college they were just like yeah i'm just gonna make this and it's just roblox call of duty consistently has higher player counts than actual battlefield or at least it did for a long time 3k peak in the last three months had like 10k but obviously 87k at one point and then we look at the battlefield all right we get battlefield 2042 with 5k on battlefield 5 4800 i mean they're all low yeah indie games taking over man i'm so here for it god they actually just make games that people actually want and it's not just like, here's the battle pass, here's the microtransactions, here's everything we can make money on. It's like, no, here's the game, it's 20 bucks, enjoy. Like I did back in Bad Company 2. I think one of the best examples pause. of art style being more important than graphics, though, is with the PS5 Demon Souls remake. I think in every way except for graphics, the remake is worse than the original, and both the enemy designs and environments have been changed to go against the visual storytelling mm. that the original did so successfully. Yeah, that is not and the same turn, opponent. This dude is not the same. And that guy? Have been changed to go against the I mean, this is a cool enemy still, but that's not the same at all. That's not the same opponent. Visual storytelling that the original did so successfully. Yeah, that's bad. And in turn, while Elden Ring doesn't have the graphical fidelity of the Demon Souls remake, I think it's a far yeah, better looking cares. game because of its incredibly nah, strong art direction. Elden Ring looks amazing. Another example I've mentioned in the past Elden is Ring. about the Destiny franchise, where there are many instances where Destiny 1 looks better than Destiny 2. That's the first one where it's like, oh. In general, though, like, the details on the weapons and stuff are better in the second. That, see, that's a weird trade-off, too. It's like, what's that decision? Like, did it optimize the game for lower-end systems more? Did they want to keep the download size low, even though I know for a fact Destiny 2 has a massive download size still, so not that. Like, what's the decision there? That is, like, really cinematic and atmospheric. You really start to notice just how big of a And then this, like, the weapon looks better, but in general, the lighting is, like, the highs are, everything's more mid- Middle lighting. It's not as deep blacks and light lights. I don't there know. is in the sequel. Great use of shadows and contrasting colors from the original are now washed out and missing detail in the sequel. Hmm. Some of my favorite games visually are yeah, that's hit or miss for me. But aesthetic, fair enough. Like Overwatch, which has a very Pixar-esque look, or games like Kingdoms of Amalur. I Amador, do appreciate Overwatch graphics. Games, not gonna lie. Or a game like Alice Madness Returns. I mean, it's also just like guys, we hit a graphical threshold 
where we can understand what's going on. You can look at a three-dimensional object in the game and know what it's supposed to be, what it represents. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be more realistic, especially third-person games. Third-person games do a really good job at getting away with the stylized stuff better than uh, first-person, I think. Because third-person, you're never actually that close to an item unless you like try to back your camera into an object or something. Like Unless you try to be wonky with your camera, you're very far, right? Due to yeah, the third-person gets away with it better. In atmospheric design. Now, some games have bad art style and bad graphics. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are a pretty good example. Dude, how... I just... It's not even worth going into. What the hell were they thinking in this game? Okay. Pokemon. <laughs> Both graphically and artistically, they look like absolute shit. <laughs> and that's not the Switch's fault. Yeah, okay. Like this and, and that, that... I mean, it's still... Better than Scarlet really and Violet. And for some reason, better. the more 3D and open world the games have gotten, the worse the visuals and art direction. You prefer the top? I mean, I guess it's just kind of like a low poly 3D versus a low 8 bit or whatever. This is kind of washed out. Yeah, this looks like sh okay. visuals and art direction. It's both unfortunate and confusing because a game like Xenoblade Chronicles 3, yep. a game also on the Switch, looks pretty good <laughs> given the hardware. This is Switch. And I was hoping Pokemon's visuals yeah, would at least be somewhere in that. And like Breath of the Wild. Right Hello. Especially since it's clearly Those all run possible. fine. I mean, 30 FPS, but it's fine. Yep. Every time I hear a studio believable. try to sell their game and their focus is on how cinematic or photorealistic it is, I usually just check out. It's like they say, every time a game developer brags about how cinematic their game is, an angel loses its wings. <laughs> I there. care much less about a world that looks saying. ultra realistic <laughs> and more about a world that feels realistic with a clear cohesive art direction and world building through its environmental storytelling. And I think sometimes people confuse themselves into thinking a game that looks realistic is more immersive. But I think that has very little to do with making eh. a game immersive. It's more about I believability. Mean, do the visuals, know, sound yeah. design, There's music... Skyrim. Yeah, so, I don't know. I actually like Skyrim graphics, dude. I think I'm just pissed. There's such a loud subset of the internet that genuinely believes that Fallout New Vegas is like the second coming of Christ and is like the best game ever made. For every positive of the story and the decision making and the role playing and... and choices have consequences there's so many uh, downsides just like the actual moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is so bad <laughs> so janky so broken even with some mods and everything's just different shades of tan brown and gray oh my god at least skyrim's got some trees and and like dragons and spells and like cool temples i don't know man i'm i'm i, I am not drinking the kool-aid on new vegas i love i drank the kool-aid on skyrim and i think a lot of that's biased like a game like this first open world game that i really sunk my teeth into i was old enough to actually understand it and i, I played the shit out of this game and i i will continue to play the shit out of this game every once in a while all right skyrim content coming soon maybe perhaps modded screw around with some funny mods maybe let me know if you want to see that and tone of the game mesh well if so then that's all that's needed to immerse someone. Going back to Atomic Heart for a second, I think a big reason why it failed to immerse me is despite its impressive visuals graphically, the game's tone and art direction feels very generic. And I make the comparison to Bioshock, say, yeah, Bioshock because Bioshock's obviously better. it was a very clear inspiration. I want Bioshock 4 to like be like Atomic Heart, but <laughs> better atmosphere and story. I haven't played this game. I want to play it. I keep saying that. There's a lot of games that he's talking about that I haven't actually played. Compared to Bioshock, but in Atomic Heart, the Unreal Engine technology is all that's selling that game. Because the story, the gameplay, and the atmosphere feels pretty uninspired. Which is unfortunate. Bro, wait, what the f The story, this whole the gameplay, place and looks the atmosphere awful. This room is horrible. Feels pretty un And then like this is like, hey, there's an Unreal Engine rock asset that we plopped right there. There's like a big one right here and here. This looks what is up with the lighting in this room? Did did, did he turn off? The, like shadows to record this clip this looks decent this this room is awful anyway okay i should focus on what he's saying but yeah i mean even now it's like is it that good of graphics though because some of it looks like operation and is often oh, compared to bioshock but in atomic heart the unreal engine technology Dude, is for all that's selling kick. that game because the okay. story the gameplay and the atmosphere feels pretty uninspired which is yeah. unfortunate it's a game that otherwise could have been really interesting if helmed and directed by the right talent. Sometimes I look at games from 2014 and 2015 and think that visuals peaked back then. I think it's a bit wild that Assassin's Creed Unity from 2014 somehow still has more striking visuals and lighting than the newer games. It's kind of crazy though, because didn't Unity like have more bugs than any other Assassin's Creed ever when it came out? Like the invisible faces and stuff, like you just see like floating eyes and a tongue. 
or the mouth. Wasn't was that Unity? That was Unity, right? I feel like Unity was trash. 2014 somehow uh, still yeah, has yeah, more I mean, it definitely striking looks visuals yeah, it looks and lighting whatever. than the newer games. The Order 1886, despite being a fairly average game, looks absolutely amazing. Much better than a lot of Unreal Engine titles in recent On years. Depth of field Dying blur, Light 1 sure. looks more impressive than its sequel. Even Far Cry. See, like what? I don't know if I believe in that. Recent years. Dying Light 1. I mean, that looks really good, but it's at night, uh, sunset, right? One looks more impressive than it's seen. Why does this look bad? Is this clip really bad? Like, what are we comparing? It's not even a comparable scene. Better than a lot of Unreal Engine titles in recent years. Dying Light 1 looks more impressive than its sequel. I'm, I'm not, I'm not convinced that Dying Light 2 looks bad. Everyone, I mean, <laughs> I seem to be an outlier here, and I know I'm being nitpicky because his point is just that older games actually looked better because they had more artistic direction and style and it wasn't just a focus on graphics. I can see that to some extent, or for the most part I agree with that like wholeheartedly, but the Dying Light series, I, I don't know why people don't like the way the two looks. Even Far Cry 4 has more attention to detail than Far Cry 5, with 4 having much more lively environments versus the more static ones of 5. Battlefield 1's destructibility and detail. I mean, is it not just like there's wind in the Far Cry 4 area? Far Cry but 4 the attention to detail attention is to not. Detail I mean, it's windy, Far but these trees look like... Five with four having much more light. These trees look better, but there's no wind because it's big, tall oak trees in the Montana. Is there wind in Montana compared to the setting of 4? You might have an L on this example, too. I don't know, man. The more static ones of 5. Battlefield 1's destructibility and details beat out 2042, and it's not even okay, close. Okay, no, that's true. That's true. The old Battlefield games literally had destructibility, like, like the chunks that broke off at predetermined spots are a lot smaller. And then, like, as the games progress to so 2042, it's like you can throw a grenade at a certain spot, and, like, this square blows out no matter what. Even if, like, you kind of hit to the side, and it should, like, hit other squares. You know what I mean? Like, the, the chunks that destruct are, are not nearly as realistic and cool. It's really disappointing. Infamous Second Son, Arkham Knight. These games still mm -hmm. outshine games eight to Good nine years Batman. later visually. The graphical technology I'm and Batman. more high-res textures are doing a lot of the heavy lifting for modern AAA developers because dude, somehow we keep oh, no, that's, regressions that's in so Valhalla, many different areas. Dude, so Valhalla. See, I was not. I don't give a shit about Vikings, so I'm not playing Valhalla. I'm just not. It's a, a bad open-world game, but you're a Viking. At least Odyssey is a bad open-world game, but you're like a Spartan. Way cooler. Vikings are dumb. Overrated. I'm I'm putting my foot down. It's not that cool. For the years, it's not just the visuals, but the animations too. But I'll save that for another day. It's important to make sure that the visuals speak for themselves, and the dialogue and exposition service the visuals rather than the other way around. I think a game like Firewatch does this almost perfectly, and I plan to cover that in a future video. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. Okay. And I'll see you all in the next one. Yeah. All right. Yeah, pretty good one. November Hotel, definitely go check him out. He's got a lot of good videos like this. I might actually react to another one of his in the future. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, no, I agree, man. The photorealism is not uh, worth it for me in gaming. I'm sure there are still some people that like it. And it is pretty cool to be like, Whoa, this new 4K 120 OLED TV. I bet Cyberpunk looks really good on that thing. And it does. It does. It's very impressive. And even then, it's not the most photorealistic game of all time. There's just a lot of ray tracing and cool lighting. But there's still style and an art direction with that game that makes it unique. It's not just Unreal Engine 5, most photorealistic thing of all time. So yeah, good graphics. It's not just realism. If you like this and you like my opinion, let me know. Like the video. Let's argue. Subscribe to the channel for more of this eventually. And yeah. Next thing, I already said it, but chronologically, uh, I'm working on some Fallout stuff. Playing all the Fallout games, gonna do a nice tier list. We're at nine pages on the script, so it's gonna be a little bit more in depth than a traditional tier list. I'm not just like, I like this game A tier. We got some ideas flowing, okay? Anyway, appreciate your time. Have a good one. Peace.